Many years ago, um, a colleague is also dead now, unfortunately. Alan and I were uh, asked by Rondekun and Taff local authority to advise them on their advocacy strategy. So we went around Rondekun and Taff to day centres, to residential services, met with social work teams, met with families, met in the three valleys, because if anybody that knows that Rondekun and Taff will know that there are three separate communities that don't talk to each other. And um, we, um, we met with these people and at one of the day services, um, we actually sat down in a room with five or six people with learning disabilities and we asked them about their lives. And amongst them was a lady called Rose. And Rose was in her 50s and she lived in a what had been a mining community, uh, a, a, a large village, small town. And she um, lived with her mother who was, and basically was the carer for her mother, who was in her, her 80s. Um, in, in council property um, and her sister lived two doors away and in this community um, it was recognised that um, essentially Rose had limited capacities so she could go to the local shop and they would uh, and she could shop for things in order to feed her mum or do the house you know, keep the house clean or whatever and they they give her stuff on tick and then her, her sister would go and settle the bill um, she was heavily involved in the local chapel, in the, in, in the miners' welfare organisation, whatever. She knew everybody. She'd been there all her life. And she, in the conversation we were having in the day centre, where she also was being, in my view, exploited, um, because she was on the catering staff. They weren't just catering for the day centre, they were catering for the local primary schools and things, and they were sending out food at lunchtime all over the place, and she was part of the team and take, you know, and good at it. You know? So there she was on, probably on, um, what did they used to call it? Um, therapeutic income, I think they used to call it, probably getting about 15 quid a week doing a, a real person's job. But anyway, there she was in this day centre. And one, one of the other peers asked a question that none of us would ever have dared to ask because of it would have been seen to be very insensitive and they asked her um, what's going to happen when your mum dies and she said oh local authority have planned for that social services have planned for that I, I'll have a place in a group home and the group looked at her and said but you've lived in this community all your life your sister lives two doors away um, why on earth? Where, where is this group home going to be? And she said, oh, it'll be, in, it, it'll be in one of the local towns. And they mentioned a particular town. And um, they said, well, that's a long way away. You won't see your friends anymore. And they took real, real um, uh, disbelief I guess and, and, and horror at, at what they were being told and um, they started to plan for how she could continue to live where she was and she said oh no no they won't allow me to have a single tenancy not not in a house that's a family home and the rest of it same afternoon that, that was in the morning in the afternoon um, Alan and I went and met with half of the local social services team and we disguised Rose's story and we disguised Rose. And we said, in these sorts of circumstances, what would happen? And they said, oh, we, we, we're very good. We, we would have planned for that. You know, um, she'd have a place in a group home. And we said, where? And they told us exactly what she told us. And we said, why does that have to be? And they said, oh, basically because, well, that's policy. You know, the housing authority, you know, we, we, you know the housing people won't allow her to stay on in what's a family home. <laughs> and, and I think this is, this is where we're getting things so wrong. You know, we're not planning for people. Everything is about these silos of economic demand or economic management, if you like. Um, and people are irrelevant in that process to a large extent. And nobody is taking an overview and you, you almost criticise the CEOs and their teams of public authorities. Nobody's taking a, a helicopter view and saying, 
you know, what really matters. Now, if you look at, you know, one of the big influences on us as well is Professor John Seddon and his crowd of people uh, at Vanguard. And what they'd say is, and they've shown it in, in experimental work with public authorities, they'd say, um, if, you, if you want to manage your resources really well, promote agency in your community. Um, ask people what matters to them and then help them solve their problem. Don't tell them that you've got the solution by going and buying this thing, this service or this product or whatever. Listen to what they've got to say. Now, there's, there's a lovely example in a report that they wrote with, um, that Locality wrote on the back of um, experiments with nine authorities that Vanguard was involved with, where the story they tell is of a lady who has had uh, a fairly um, difficult life. She's some, one of those people that has found themselves in abusive relationships quite often. She's had children by a number of different men who've, who've all disappeared and probably not treated her very well. Um, she is in a circumstance where she's, she's caring for, a, uh, for, I think it was three children on her own uh, of varying ages. And then she develops a... Uh, a debilitating condition that is going to get worse and she can't climb stairs anymore and her bathroom is upstairs and the kids bedrooms are upstairs and whatever so she hasn't made any demands on the system before and she goes to the local authority and she says can you help me I need a stair lift so they send somebody out to do an assessment and they decide that she's an incompetent parent instead and the story unfolds and there's a whole gang of stuff done but her kids end up in care costing the earth <laughs> because nobody listened to the fact that she was saying I need a stair lift in order to be able to supervise my children to ensure they're clean to do various things um, now John's team get involved with that authority and one of the rules they say is hey listen to the person listen to what they're saying help them solve their problem attend to, to value not cost <laughs> some basic rules they do that, she's provided with a stair lift, her kids are back out of care, costs are reduced massively. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, th these are the examples that we're working with uh, about what is care.